broadcasting from the KMF Collective Studio, it's time for the Keep Moving Forward podcast. Join us every week as we dive into the stories of remarkable current and former athletes that have transitioned into the real world. Now here's your host, Katie Galley. Hi everyone, and welcome to the 240th episode of the Keep Moving Forward podcast. I'm your host, Katie Galley. In the KMF Collective studio with me today, I have CrossFit Level 2 coach at One Fellowship Fitness, personal trainer, and former collegiate basketball player, Anna Elliott. How are you doing, Anna? Hey, Katie. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to talk with you today. I am super excited to dive in because, I mean, well, one of the things we share is that we're both coaches at One Fellowship. So that's, of course, how our personal, our journeys came to kind of cross over. And so I'm really excited to learn more about you, your journey through basketball, and of course, how you found um, this mutual love that we share of CrossFit. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So Anna, just to um, get to know your background a little bit, can you share with us where you grew up and how, if at all, was your childhood shaped by athletics? Yeah, so I um, grew up in Barrington, Illinois, which is kind of a little small town right outside Chicago. Um, I grew up with four siblings, so there was five of us, four girls and one boy, and we always had to, you know, compete for attention. I think that's kind of where it all started. Um, I'm right in the middle, so I have two younger than me and two older than me, Um, and we grew up always playing sports. You know, there's always a basketball in the house, a soccer ball in the house, baseball, whatever you can think of, Um, and that's pretty much where we started. I started with organized sports when I was probably four and started with soccer. Um, Grew up playing soccer. You know, my weekends consisted of eight hours at the park, you know, either watching my game, playing my game, watching my sister's game, watching my brother's game. It was like a whole day or weekend event. Hmm. Man, that's, I mean, I I love that one being shaped by, you had five kids, so four siblings, and then um, discovering at a young age, like kind of that love for soccer. So um, spending all of your time there, whether it was you playing or or, um, being there for your siblings. So at that time, Anna, when you started at such a young age specifically with soccer um did you decide or did you want to see where you could take that sport I I mean you were so young then but or did you start to um play other sports kind of when did the the love of basketball or I guess the pursuit of basketball come into the picture yeah it's funny because my dad really loved basketball a lot Mm -hmm. and we all played soccer and so one day he's like you know what I was in seventh grade and he's like, we're going to the YMCA and we're going to shoot some hoops because he was kind of sick of the soccer, the soccer phase. (laughs) He was like, I need, I need something else, I guess. And so we went to the YMCA and I remember we sat at the YMCA for about an hour. He was teaching me how to shoot and I did not make one. I did not make one shot. And he's like, Oh gosh, I do not think that basketball is going to be the sport for you. But I tried out for the team anyways um, in middle school. And because we had such a strong soccer team, like four or five of us decided just to play middle school basketball just because we were like super fast and athletic, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and we were all newbies. So it was fun for our coach to kind of see us transform at that middle school age, like seventh and eighth grade to be like, wow, okay, I'm going to develop these players. And we actually ended up winning the championship for our middle school for seventh grade and eighth grade. And we were all like, wow, okay, I guess we, you know, our coach was really set on showing us a new sport and like had that challenge of I'm going to turn these soccer players into basketball players. Cause of course he had the, we had the athleticism, we had the speed. It was just teaching us mainly how to shoot, you know, um, and the plays of course. But after that, I was like, I'm going to play, I want to play high school basketball. And then, um, I stumbled across some injuries early on. I had to actually get ankle surgery and knee surgery twice. So after, Going through those injuries with soccer, I was like, you know what, I think that I'm just going to stick with basketball, which is funny in hindsight because basketball is way more lateral movement (laughs) than soccer. Soccer is basically up and down and basketball is way more side to side. But I think like because we were so good our seventh grade and eighth grade year, we were all like, okay, let's stick together and let's play you know, in high school, and we all ended up going to the same high school and being like the best team as freshmen. So we were like, okay, if we all stay together for the next four years playing basketball, we could be like a really great team. So that's kind of what sparked the transition from soccer to basketball. And I just, I I think I tried out for soccer 
the soccer team my freshman year, but then that's when I had to get surgery. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to recover during the season because it's two separate seasons um, and just give basketball a go. And that's when I kind of totally transferred over and said goodbye to soccer and said hello to basketball, which is so funny because I played soccer for so much longer than I played basketball and then I ended up playing college basketball. So it's just funny how it all turns out. Right. But, I mean, it, it is crazy how um, how you can make those shifts and, and transitions. And so, I mean, initially, Anna, when you, I mean, soccer was your sport, you love playing it, and then you kind of stumbled into the world of basketball. But um, when you initially sustained those injuries that resulted in ultimately surgeries, were you a freshman in high school then? Was it in middle school when that happened? Or how did, I mean, how did that kind of um, piece of your journey happen and then ultimately lead you into pursuing basketball for full force? Yeah, so I ended up getting surgery my freshman year in high school on my ankle. And it's funny because I, I, it seemed like every time I went to the doctor, something was wrong with me. So I never liked to go to the doctor. I was scared of doctors because I was like, if I go, something's going to be wrong with me. And I had a, I had a lot of ankle pain mm-hmm. for, for a long time and I didn't want to go to the doctor. And I finally did one day because I woke up and I literally couldn't walk. And my parents were like, Anna, there's no more, like, there's no more excuses we're taking to the doctor. And it turns out my ankle was broken. Wow. Um, I had, I had a bunch of fractured pieces in there, but I just would not, I did not want to give up what I was doing. And it's funny. Cause I tell people now I'm like, you have to go listen. You have to listen to the doctor. You need to go check it out because you never know. Like if I would have gone six months earlier, you know, my whole story could have been different. You know, maybe I would have played college soccer. I don't know, but it was during that time that sparked, like I need to go to the doctor. So I, I was, I ended up, it was a very long process. I ended up in a cast and then I ended up in a boot. And then after I think six to eight months of that, I ended up having to get surgery anyways, which looking back on it, I probably wish I would have done the surgery first, but mm. I was young and I, and I was scared obviously. So I didn't really, didn't really go down that path of surgery first, but after coming back from that injury, that was kind of really my motivation to like, I'm going to succeed and I'm going to succeed at one thing. Cause I also ran track. So oh, I was, wow. Basically, I could have been a three sport athlete because they're kind of all at different seasons, but gave up um, soccer and track and then focused on basketball. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like that. I mean, being able to make that decision, have kind of a life altering thing happen to you as a freshman in high school. I mean, so early on and then having it shape you into look forward of, no, I'm not going to give up sports. I mean, yeah, this is a sidelining injury, but it's something that's going to propel me forward. And so just adjusting and making that shift to, okay, well now I'm going to focus in on basketball. And so Mm -hmm. um, from there, and I mean, having, so sustaining that injury, going through surgery and then focusing in on basketball, um, why did you, I mean, you said you chose basketball with, even though it had more lateral movements in soccer and even over track, which is, you know, running and, and jumping, whatever the events that you were doing, but why basketball then did you at that time even know that, okay, I can, I want to see where I can take this sport. I think I can go to the next level. Or was it really just the decision of, I need to choose one sport to focus on and I'm just going to decide on basketball. Yeah. At that point, I remember having a conversation with my dad and he's just like, you need to pick like, like you're, if you want to play a college sport, I knew I wanted to play sports in college. He said, if you want to play sports in college and you're giving some of yourself to soccer, some of yourself to track, some of yourself to basketball, you're not really going to excel in one, mm-hmm. you know, whether, whether you decide to choose soccer, great, let's give it a hundred percent. Whether you want to do track, let's give it a hundred percent. Whether you want to do basketball, give it a hundred percent. I mean, nowadays, I think sports, the sports realm is different where you can do multiple sports, but if you really want to get that scholarship for me personally, I knew that I had to choose. Mm -hmm. And so I think because the freshman year had so much success with our team. And then obviously I had the hiccup with the injury at the end of the season leading into the whole, whole entire summer. Um, I just, I just focused on basketball. I was like, I'm going to do this. And I, um, my older brother, play basketball too and I think I kind of just wanted to be like him I guess and I just I don't think that there was a defining moment like this is why I want to choose basketball I think it was just majority of like it was really fun and we were really good so yeah that's kind of why I chose it and it makes sense I mean being drawn to something that 
um, you are starting to excel at. And two, it wasn't even, again, like you said, it, you stumbled into it, right? You soccer, you had played from a young age. And so being able to grow in that sport, but then all of a sudden starting a new one and being just good at it and having a team rallying around you to support you and, and carry you guys and be able to be those champions in seventh and eighth grade to let you, you know, carry you into that next level. And so Anna, mm-hmm. from that time when you decided to specialize and focus in on basketball, seeing, okay, if I want to go to the next step and play college, um, play college sport, then I need to specialize and I need to focus. So as you started to do that and you made that decision, did you already have a school in mind that you wanted to go to? Were you just casting a, a net and saying, okay, whatever school gets, I get into, I'm going to play basketball there. What were you kind of, um, what was that, that process like? for you as far as taking that next step towards college? So I think my junior year was when it became a reality to me that I was going to play sports or in college basketball specifically. My dad sat us down and told us, hey, if you want to go to college, you have to pay for it or you have to get a scholarship because me and your mom can't afford five kids to go to college. So at that point, we knew that we really needed to focus in and dial in and earn scholarship to college or we'd have to pay for it ourselves obviously that happens a lot you can get out loans in that court and that and that sort of stuff but we just made it a goal like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get a scholarship and I'm gonna play in college um and so my junior year my younger sister was a freshman I was a junior it was the first time we got to play together on a varsity team and it was it was so fun. We had a great team. It was so much fun to play with my younger sister. Um, and then we kind of had a goal like, Hey, we want to play together. So in order to play together in college, I decided to go to a junior college that was about 10, 15 minutes away from my house called, um, Harper college. And I went there for two years to wait for my younger sister to graduate. And then at that point we decided to choose a school together. Um, My brother graduated from the Air Force Academy in Colorado, and at that time, he was still there, and he was like, you know, why don't you just explore other colleges in another state? Like, you guys have been in Barrington your whole life. Let's kind of explore something new. So he had gave me a list of colleges around there. Um, I think it was Colorado Christian School, Colorado State, University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, Uh, Boulder, all these other schools. And me and Abby sat down and we were like, hey, let's go through these schools and see which one we would want to go to. And the University of Colorado Colorado Springs coach, Coach Laster, um, we reached out to him. Actually, my brother reached out to him because it was during the time where we couldn't really speak to the coaches. It was like the NCAA code where there's like a quiet period. Mm -hmm. So my brother reached, reached out to him and was like, Hey, my sisters are looking to play basketball at your school. Is there any way that you can come and see them play? Cause obviously we live in Chicago. He lives in Colorado Springs. It's not like we're getting recruited and no one's going to randomly come to see one of our games that far away. Mm -hmm. Um, So we flew out to Colorado and did a pickup basketball game at my brother's air force base with eight guys and me and Abby, me and my sister, Abby and coach Laster came and saw us play. (laughs) And obviously he couldn't really talk to us or say anything to us, but that was kind of the start of like the recruiting process for us where we were like, okay, that's the school we're going to pick. Let's, let's dive in and just give it all to that school. And so during, um, when the quiet period was over, he saw a bunch of my film. Of course, at this time I was a I was a sophomore at junior college, so I could only be there for two years. My sister was a senior. Um, and he was like, hey, I'm really interested in both of you guys coming here. Let's let's see how we can do it. You know what I mean? And then we ended up going for a college visit, practicing with the team, meeting the girls, stayed for a weekend. And we left there saying, okay, um, let's go there. Wow. Man, yeah. I love that. And that's so cool. I mean, the journey – the journey that you took and um, to wanting to really play basketball with Abby in college. And so being willing to kind of take that, take a next step, of course, in, in continuing your um, academics and your career as far as an athlete, but um, going JUCO and then waiting to go um, to a four-year college with Abby. And so, Anna, when you were making that decision, was there ever a thought or a time where you thought, man, I, I, sh- I wish I just I want to go to a four-year college. I mean, I don't know if um, I want to wait anymore for Abby to graduate or was it always I just, I want to play basketball with her at the next level and so waiting for her was kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, waiting for her was kind of a no-brainer. I think I um, 
I was lucky that I got to live at home. I was lucky I got to have a job. I actually worked all through junior college. I took um, night classes in order to play basketball. Sometimes I was rushing from a game to hit my night class because wow. I worked during the day. Um, and then I'd have basketball practice and then I'd have a night class or a game or whatever, or whatever that was. And um, just to try to get some extra money to know that if I was going to move to Colorado, like I didn't want to go there with nothing. Um, and I think what helped with that was to know and have the motivation that we were going to do something together. You know, we were all, we're always a very close family and we've always wanted, we always had the dream of playing on the same team, I think in college. So that was something that I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that for us and I'll stay in living at home working you know and going to that junior college to wait for her to graduate I love that I mean having that real relationship with your sister and not wavering wanting to really continue on and I mean I can't imagine what that must have been like having the experience of being able to play with your sibling at college I mean continuing on and um and being able to just have those experiences and so when you guys did do that Anna when you went on to to Colorado together um what was that like for you one navigating the transition of going from junior college to college um moving states I mean going going with your sister what was all of that like for you how did you guys navigate that transition so it was fun to go out there at first because we got to we lived with my brother for a little bit um and it was very cool to see a different type of atmosphere than what I was used to in junior college because obviously now I'm in the NCAA division two it's um definitely a bigger school you know we both succeeded as far as the transition. It wasn't hard. We had been to Colorado multiple times before because we watched our brother play football. So it was kind of one of those things where we knew we would transition well. Um, unfortunately, the basketball was short-lived because my dad got diagnosed with hepatitis C and was hospitalized for about eight months. Um, because of that, he because of that, I mean, basically, I wasn't getting enough financial help playing basketball and the scholarship. So I decided to transfer back home. Um, my sister Abby was freshman of the year and all scorer and she, she moved her way up. So it was just a no brainer to have her stay and me go back. Um, but that didn't really stop me because I decided to play at a NAIA division two school Judson university. So I, no matter what happened, I knew I wanted to play basketball. And I knew I was going to keep trying to fight for a spot on a team. Mm -hmm. So it's funny how the roadmap had a lot of different stops, but I still continued to play basketball and finish out that goal through all the years that I played in college. And I mean, I, I love that you're right. It, it's really easy, I think, to get bogged down with the minutia of a goal. You set a goal for yourself and you want to focus on achieving exactly that. So it wasn't necessarily, though, I'm going to play Division One basketball or Division Three basketball or having those set strictures. It was, I'm going to play basketball at the next level. Whatever that looks like, whatever it takes, I'm going to do that. And that's exactly what you did. Navigating multiple transitions in the span of just a couple of years in pursuit of that goal, but knowing that you were going to not... you weren't going to relent in it. So whatever it looked like you were okay with because you were going to keep fighting um, to achieve that. Right. And it's nice because, well, maybe nice isn't the right word, but I got a lot of experience. I got to play at the junior college level. I got to play at the NCAA division two level. I got to play at the NAIA division two level. So it's like going from a small pond to a big pond to then a medium pond, but all throughout my time playing, I really developed and tried to, you know, conquer that adversity by not letting the obstacle that was in front of me hindering me from still playing the sport that I loved. Absolutely. I mean, I love that. It was um, just taking it in stride and, and seeing, just being willing to walk through those doors of opportunity, um, whatever they were going to look like. And so Anna then um, go, transferring to um, Jetson University and finishing up. Did you finish up then your um, college career and your basketball career at that school? Yes, I did. I got my um, degree in individualized education from Judson University and got to finish out playing there 
actually, um, my best friend and I played together at junior college. And when I left to go to Colorado, she left to go to um, ISU. And after our years apart, I guess, her at ISU, me at um, Colorado, we decided to come back together and play together at Judson University. So that was kind of like a bonus. Like, obviously, I was sad that I had to leave Colorado. But at the same time, I made the best of the situation. She was having a hard time being away from home as well. And so it was almost like, wow, we get to play together again. So that was fun, too, because also throughout all my years, I was playing with either my sister or my best friend. Oh, man. I love that. I mean, being able to um, to have share those experiences specifically with people that you love so much and that you've had such a strong relationship with your whole life, just continuing on and sharing things that are so important. Um, I mean, specifically basketball and going on to the next level to play, being able to share that with both your sister and your best friend. I mean, that's, um, that's amazing. That's like an invaluable thing that I guess resulted in, in this whole journey. Mm -hmm. Love that. So Anna, for you then, um, pursuing this degree in individualized education, what was the driving force behind that? Did you, um, always want to be a teacher or what, what kind of did this, um, come up kind of while you were pursuing college was basketball, the primary driving force. How did you decide that you wanted to pursue individualized education? So when I was, um, going to Harper college as my junior college, I was working that whole time. I worked at, um, as a nanny, I worked at kinder care learning center. And I always was really involved with younger kids, younger generation. I love kids. I love being around kids. I love babysitting. I was kind of always like the mom of the group. I always wanted to play teacher in school. My parents bought us these like mock desks where we literally would set up school in our basement and I would be the teacher. And we just always <laughs> play that. And I think that at a young age, I think I knew like, I want to be a teacher. I want to stand in front of a classroom. I want to, I want to do that. And so that was where it started in getting my degree in individualized education. I didn't know yet what I wanted to teach. I didn't know if I wanted to stick with the early learning center, like pre-kindergarten, four, five, six. I didn't know if I wanted to do middle school, high school. Um, I just knew that I wanted to get education credits and be able to have that in my tool belt. So that's the, that was the driving force behind choosing that major. Yeah. And that makes sense. I mean, having that, that love and that passion in tandem with basketball, wanting to pursue something alongside of it, um, in helping kids and, and working with kids like you had done. And so Anna, then coming up on graduation and looking forward uh -huh. into the next phase of your life, did you know then, um, that you wanted to become a teacher, pursue education and that next step? Or, um, did you think I want to see if I can try and continue basketball in some way, shape or form coming up on graduation? What was that? that piece like for you? I think I knew my basketball career was done. I didn't think that I was really good enough, I guess, to play professional basketball. So I knew that I was going to do it more as a hobby, just, you know, play at the gyms, play at LA Fitness or um, just play for fun. Kind of. I filled that role of missing basketball, I guess, by coaching basketball. I started coaching right after college at um, my AAU program that I did. And that's kind of what I guess, motivated me to keep basketball in my life, but not really it be my main, my main focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that makes sense. I mean, getting into coaching and being able to give back in that way to, to that next generation, like you're saying is so important to you. Um, and in this sport that you love so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Anna, from there, I mean, starting making that transition, deciding you wanted to start coaching, um, what was next for you as far as a career path? Did you immediately get into teaching or um, what? Yeah. What were you you looking at to do next? Yeah. So after college, I mean, I cut I was kind of in limbo where it's like, wow, OK, I don't have sports anymore. I don't have school anymore. What am I going to do? And um, my brother and sister in law lived in Georgia at the time and they were both stationed at the air force at the air force base um down in valdosta georgia and unfortunately my brother was deployed to afghanistan and had to leave a two-year-old and an infant and when he got back from afghanistan he was going to move to atlanta and he had called me right after graduated and said hey i'm moving to atlanta uh, meredith his wife 
just got her deployment papers and has to go to Kuwait. So I'm wondering if you would like to move to Atlanta with me and help me take care of my kids. And it kind of was one of those things where it's like, wow, I never thought that, that I would just, you know, pack up my life and go. But obviously family has been very important in my life and I would do anything for my family. So not really exploring anything else besides Colorado for a year. I was like, yeah, sure. I'm going to move to Atlanta with you and I'll um, put, I guess, my career on hold because at that point I still was, you know, in limbo, not really knowing. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I didn't know what age group I wanted to teach at. I just stopped playing sports. So all these different things, you know, as a 21 year old, I mean, I had no reason to say no. I was like, sure. Yeah, let's sign me up. Um, so I moved to Atlanta with him, his wife, was deployed and I stayed with them for a year um basically so that was kind of like my in-between year I graduated and I didn't really start a job yet um after that year was up and she was back with her family I looked at Mount Pisgah Christian School which was a mile away from my house and I was like hmm maybe I should apply there it looks like a great school and it's only a mile away from the house I'm thinking that I really love Georgia and I want to stay here Living here for one year was enough for me to say goodbye to Chicago and goodbye to that cold snow. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. So I was like, you know what? Let me just give it a try. I honestly didn't tell anyone that I was applying there because I was still like not sure if I wanted to what I wanted to do. You know, I was just kind of like, you know what? I'm just going to. I'm just going to go on a whim and do it. Um, I called them and they weren't hiring at the time, but she was like, just send me a resume just in case, just whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. Send her a resume. She called me the next day. She's like, so you play it. You're a basketball player, huh? And that's like the first thing that the director said to me. She's like, I play basketball too. And she actually, her name is Joyce Lenore and she was on the first ever WNBA basketball league. Wow. wow. So it was funny that that's the first connection that she had said to me. And I was like, yeah, I did. I played basketball. And, She's like, well, come on into the school and let's have an interview. And I was like, okay, cool. So really just have playing college basketball was highlight on my resume that that was the first thing that got me into a job that wasn't even hiring. Man. So it's so fun. So cool. Um, and I got there after, after the first interview, she was like, we'd love to have you. And I started, I started teaching at Mount Pisgah Christian School, started coaching basketball and track at the varsity level. I worked my way up from being the fifth grade middle school coach to the varsity coach. And um, that is when I really found my passion to pursue, you know, the, that younger generation, that middle school, high school level. That's when I was like, wow, okay, I love this age group. I love motivating them. I love seeing them reach their goals. I love being a part of their journey. And during that stint at Mount Pisgah, CrossFit Remnant was right across the street. And what was what what is now One Fellowship Fitness, where we both work, it was called CrossFit Remnant back then. And I walked into that gym and I got a um, membership there. And I started I started working out there. And everyone that I was working out with was like, "You're such a good motivator. You should really be a CrossFit coach." Um, because you do coaching anyways, you know, I mean, I'm a teacher and I'm leading these kids, but it's also, it's also a form of coaching at the same point, you know, it's just basically a different age group. Mm -hmm. And, um, after three years at Mount Pisgah, I was like, you know what? I think I am going to, to find a career in fitness. I mean, I loved doing CrossFit. I loved being a part of that community. That's kind of what gave me that competition, um, but the competition that I had in my heart from growing up playing sports and playing college basketball and all this stuff is like you walk into the gym and it's a battle between you and yourself every day. You know, you're not going to go into the gym. You're already there showing up. It's like you might as well put a good work in if you're already there and walk into those doors. And that's kind of what I try to teach my kids in basketball. I'm like, hey, you guys have to be here for an hour and a half. I have to be here for an hour and a half. And let's try to make it the best hour and a half we have. Mm -hmm. Or whether you're, at, whether you're at basketball practice or playing a game, I'm like, you want to be able to look at yourself in the mirror after a basketball game and say, I did everything that I could. Of course, you have bad days or whatever, but the effort, you have control over your effort. That's the one thing that you can control. And so I think that that was kind of what motivated me to kind of switch over from the teaching realm in a school to being teaching in a gym. Yeah. And that transition, I mean, it seemed 
like it makes a lot of sense. I mean, that seamless move from being a coach and a teacher and then to then discovering this kind of side love of CrossFit and deciding, oh, I want to coach. I want to pursue all in and this fitness um, down this fitness path. And so, Anna, when you first discovered CrossFit Remnant across the street from Mount Pisgah, um, did you know what CrossFit was at that time? Was it just something about the gym that really sparked your interest? How did you even really become aware of the sport enough to want? And I mean, and why did it pique your interest enough to make you want to walk into the doors of the gym? Yeah. So when I moved to Atlanta, the first year that I moved to Atlanta, um, me and my brother had a lot of time, you know, just to be with each other. And one of the things that kind of connected us was the CrossFit. And so it was just kind of both of our outlet outlets, I guess. And we just would talk about it all the time. We would do it together. My brother, Aaron, actually started coaching at Remnant. That's kind of why we chose that gym, um, because it was right across from Mount Pisco, a mile away from our house. And he was like, you know what, let's just go and explore these different gyms. And that's the one we found that was really close. So it worked out for both of us. And that was kind of the thing that we, we just decided on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it makes sense. I mean, one proximity, but two, having that love of that joint love with your brother of CrossFit and being able to pursue it. Um, in, I mean, together again, like you were able to pursue basketball with Abby and just kind of that mm-hmm. trend of building those relationships, having those really close knit ties to your family and friends. And then they seem to manifest incredibly um, well and beautifully in sport. Right. I love that. So Anna, from there, I mean, joining Remnant and then having it kind of called out in you that you're a great leader and this coach and you're already a motivator. Um, what made you decide that you wanted to first pursue becoming a CrossFit level one coach, but then two, after that, deciding um, to go all in in the fitness industry? I mean, pursuing your personal training certificate and then eventually um, level two Can you uh, for CrossFit. Can you walk us through that, um, your fitness journey as uh, with respect to becoming a coach and personal trainer? Yeah, so um, another thing that I kind of did before CrossFit was bodybuilding, and I did a couple of competitive bodybuilding shows, and I think for me, it was really mental. It was really a mental, more of a mental game when you do that, because it's kind of a competition of who can diet the best. Mm -hmm. It's not really a competition on performance, Um, and so that was also another reason why I really loved CrossFit, because it was something that you can perform and something that you can do. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the way that you look, Um, and so I think... I loved that. That was like the main thing that I was like, okay, well, if I can, if I can stand up here and lead these people and teach them something and make them feel good about what they're doing, I want to sign up for that. So that's what made me get my level one. Um, after getting my level one and doing CrossFit for about three years and coaching for three years, I think I just wanted more. I wanted to know more about the human body. I wanted to know more about in the CrossFit world. We have people that are coming in from all ages, you know, from 75 years old, my, my oldest client to five years old in a kid's class, you know, and I wanted to learn more about the body and specifically to age groups and specifically to, okay, shoulder pain, knee pain, hip pain, ankle pain, you know, whatever the case may be, I want to understand the science behind that and getting my personal training certification, you learn a lot more about the body in terms of, how to help it if you have a shoulder injury, you know, or if you have a knee injury, a lot more modifications, a lot more of, okay, well, if you can't overhead squat, like what we do in CrossFit, I know something else that you can do, Mm -hmm. you know, and just kind of learning, not being able to, if someone walks in and say, oh, well, I'm not comfortable doing X, Y, and Z. Okay. Well here, I can show you something else that you can do, you know, and you're still going to get a fantastic workout. And I think having that extra certification or having that knowledge behind um, National Academy of Sports Science, that's what the, the certification is. It really enables you to be able to tell that client what they can do no matter what, no matter what hindrances they have. Mm. Shoulder pain, knee pain, hip pain, whatever. It's like, I, if that's fine. I know how I'm going to help you. And I think that that's kind of what the driving force was for me because in CrossFit, a lot of people have some type of pain, you know, the yeah. well, majority of people have some type of pain in fitness in general, you know, you're not going to get, if there's a class of 20 people, you're going to get at least two or three people that have some kind of hindrances. Mm-hmm. Right. And so then it's having the knowledge, um, 
within your certifications, within your training to be able to modify those workouts or be able to come at, come to these athletes who have those um, hindrances, hindrances, have any kind of issues and say, oh, we can modify that movement. But it comes from that experience, those certifications that you've gleaned over the years by um, just pursuing this, this career in fitness. And so Anna, um, I mean, going after CrossFit certifications and then the NASM certification too for personal training, um, how did those I guess come together so I know obviously today you're still a, you're a CrossFit coach and then to pursuing your personal training on the side is it predominantly focused on youth athletes or do you personal train people of all ages yep so I do personal training of all ages um I think what my specialty is I guess you could say quote unquote or what I really absolutely love to do is is with the athletes because I know that if you're there trying to get personal training you want to get better Mm -hmm. you know there's a difference of oh my team's making me do this you can tell right away within the first session the kids that want to be there and the kids that don't really want to be there and their parents are making them there Mm -hmm. so I think that for me personally to see that passion in an athlete, what, whatever sport they're doing is kind of how I saw myself when I was at that young middle school, high school girl. Like I know that I have a goal and I want to reach it and I'm going to surround myself with people that want to help me. Mm -hmm. So I think it just also extends beyond fitness as far as, Hey, you want to reach this goal? Okay. I'm going to help you try to get there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Being able to draw on your own experiences as an athlete specifically. I mean, being able to surround yourself with the right people, having those people to motivate you in the right way. And so Anna, when you do come across and you have um, those two different kinds of athletes, the ones that are there because they want to be there, they have that internal drive. And then two, the athletes who it's clear that their parents brought them and they want them to do something physically active. How do you appeal to those athletes? How do you kind of bridge that gap and meet them where they're at to get them excited about fitness and just about being there I think it also it it just depends on the person like Mm -hmm. if I'm if I can tell that the kid doesn't really want to be there it's not really having a good time and not into it you know I'll I'll ask them what what are they interested in like what are your goals what are what are you trying to get doing to get better at like some some that come in are like oh well I don't really have a passion for a specific sport, but I want to do something. It's like, okay, let's try a couple different workouts. Maybe let's try one that's more dominantly focused on muscles and bodybuilding or something. Let's try something that's more focused on running. Let's go outside. You know, you just have to kind of have different varieties of, of workouts and try to help them figure out and kind of hone in on what they're really passionate about. Mm Mm-hmm. And that makes sense. I mean, trying to, again, meet them where they're at. So maybe they're not passionate necessarily about sports specifically, but it's trying to find what it is that they are passionate about, getting into those goals and and those drives and desires within them, and then trying to um, emulate that or show them, oh, well, if you do this, this is actually going to help you in pursuit of that goal that's seemingly unrelated to fitness and wellness, but it's it's actually inherently linked. Right. And like in motivating them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if you, if you want to be better at soccer, then we need to work on your endurance Mm -hmm. or something, you know what I mean? Or kind of make it, give them the understanding that they're, they're trying to find the answer to their question. Okay. Well, the more questions you ask, the better that they'll be able to circle in and figure out what they really want. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so Anna, looking forward now with um, specifically with your Anna Elliott training and and being personal trainer and then too as a CrossFit coach at One Fellowship, um, looking forward, what are your personal goals? What do you hope to achieve through personal training and, and, um, and CrossFit? I think at this point right now, I just really like, um, I like my day to day. I like the people that I see. I like, I like, CrossFit because I like the community of it. I like the people that I'm, that I'm surrounding myself with in that now that it's one fellowship fitness, those core people that we've, that I've known for five years, you know, just really focusing in on them and helping them feel better every single day. Um, as far as doing the personal training, I'm just trying to really seek out those athletes that want to get better, you know, performance training, the athletes that want to play the division one sport or that want to play, um, any kind of sport in college, you know, over the summer, I got to work with some division one volleyball players and it was, it's just so fun to see 
what kind of motivation you can have. Like we, we squatted and stuff and I'm getting text messages from them. Hey, Courtney, and I just want to let you know, like we did our squats and I'm up 20 pounds. And it's like when they're coming in intimidated and they're, they're embarrassed of working out or they're not confident. And then they're texting me that they're so proud of themselves for making a 20 pound PR. It's like, that is why I do what I do. You know, Mm -hmm. that is what is motivating me on a day to day basis too. Okay. I'm going into the gym, which is something that's normal for me to do. But if I can touch 20 people and fill their cup, then I have a successful day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that. I mean, there's something about weightlifting specifically, but I mean, just fitness that um, it can boost your confidence so much. It's like you're saying, I mean, texting you that they got a 20 pound PR when they were initially petrified to even walk in a gym or touch a barbell it's just that's amazing to see that growth and be a part of it and then too being able to draw on your own experiences because you've been there too I mean you didn't start off as this stellar athlete everybody starts off from somewhere and so being able to start there look and reflect Mm -hmm. back and then um use that to help them Mm -hmm. definitely love that Well, Anna, um, you've led clearly this just incredible journey in life to date and and achieved so much and looking forward, knowing, of course, you're going to achieve everything you set your mind to with training um, as an athlete specifically. And then, of course, as a coach, too. But I just have one final question that I ask all of my interviewees. What do you want to be remembered for? Mm, That's a great question, Katie. (laughs) (laughs) I think um, what I would want to be remembered for is, you know, someone that after you hang out with that person, you just feel refreshed. You know, it's like a breath of fresh air. I want people to, when they're around me, just feel like they have the confidence and motivation to go and do whatever they set out to do, no matter what adversity strikes. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. To learn more about our guests, check out the show notes at keepmovingforward.us. While you're there, Go ahead and subscribe to our newsletter to stay up to date on all things coming out of the KMF Collective Studio. Always remember, you can beat the odds and go the distance if only you keep moving forward.